Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dinosaur Channel. This is your home on the internet for all things dinosaur and prehistoric. I'll let you guys know something right now. This is gonna be a long episode, but we gotta talk about this stuff. I'm your host, Tall, and today we're gonna to be talking all about V. Pterodactyl, one of the most household names in dinosaur and prehistoric animal history. But before we do, I want to remind you guys to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss a single episode. We are covering all the animals in the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World universe, every single one that we can get our hands on. So please make sure to leave us a dino-sized thumbs up and don't forget to comment down below a dinosaur or prehistoric creature that you would like to see us cover in the future. With that being said, let's cover everything you need to know about this pterodactyl. Well, first of all, pterodactyl is just an informal name, kind of a generic term used for members of the order Pterosauria. Pterosaurs are a distinct group of winged reptiles. So while there are more than a hundred species of pterosaurs, the name pterodactyl has become a pop culture synonym for pterosaurs in general, particularly the pterodactylus and its larger distant cousin, the pterodon. Then again, please remember that works of fiction do not actually uphold scientific data and accuracy. <laughs> Jurassic Park. So in this episode, when we say pterodactyl, we're referring to pterodactylus. Pterodactylus antiquus was the first pterosaur to be named and identified as a flying reptile, different from dinosaurs. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the pterodactyl is not a dinosaur. This creature is an ancient flying lizard, but more on that later. Pterodactyl is a combination of the Greek words for wing and finger, because early restorations of the animal show that its wings were supported and held up by an elongated fourth finger digit. This creature lived in the late Jurassic period about 160 to 140 million years ago. And fossils of the pterodactyl were mainly found in what is now Bavaria, Germany. The oldest pterodactyl fossils were actually unearthed in China, which were dated to be about 163 million years old. And fossil fragments were also believed to have been found in England and in Tanzania. So this thing had a pretty global operation. Some scientists believe that certain types of pterodactyl lived up to the late Cretaceous period, as recent as 66 million years ago, so right up to the end of the dinosaur age. This was based on newly discovered fossils found in sites in northern Morocco. Now, because the name pterodactyl has been a blanket term for various pterosaur species, fossil records of pterodactylus have been pretty obscure. Different species of pterodactylus were probably mixed up and have gone through a number of changes in classification. A number of species assigned to pterodactylus were based on poor remains that have proven difficult to assign to one species or the other. While some species may have been genuine, others may turn out to be at a nominum dubium, Latin for dubiously named, or better assigned to another genus of pterosaur. It's getting pretty confusing. So what did this controversial creature look like? Again, in this episode, when we say pterodactyl, we're referring to the pterodactylus. The pterodactyl was a relatively small pterosaur. It was estimated to be around three feet, five inches, or 1.6 meters, and it could have only weighed about 10 pounds or 4.5 kilograms to 20 pounds total, or nine kgs at the most. Because no complete adult specimens have been found, this is just an estimate based on similar species. Other pterodactyl species were thought to be smaller, but it turns out that most of the fossil specimens discovered were just juveniles. And based on the study of paleontologist Christopher Bennett, fully mature pterodactylus specimens remain unknown, or may have been mistakenly classified as a different genus, unfortunately. The pterodactyl had a long neck, and its skull was long and narrow. Its beak was filled with 90 narrow teeth, and it held its head at an angle instead of straight forward. And unlike early pterosaurs, whose tails were long and thin, pterodactylus had a very, very short tail. This creature had a crest on top of its head, which was made up of soft tissue instead of bone. And it is thought that the crest grew as the pterodactyl aged, and was a sign of maturity. And since the pterodactyl is a reptile, it is believed to be lizard skin with small scales instead of having feathers, or maybe little hairs called pycnofibers, which are common among pterosaurs. This prehistoric flying reptile was the first animal after insects to actually evolve powered flight. The pterodactyl didn't just leap into the air or glide, but flapped its wings to generate lift. There are several theories as to how the pterodactyl took off. Some scientists think that it climbed up trees using its claws before launching, or that it launched itself from cliffs. Others think the pterodactylus was able to just do a big old spring into the air before using its wings to gain height. This ancient reptile probably spent most of its life flying, and the rest of the time it probably waddled like a little penguin on its hind legs. Now imagine flocks of flying lizards swooping down towards you. Terrifying. Kind of reminiscent of Jurassic World. That went very well. So what is the pterodactyl so damn famous for? Well, pterodactyl is one of the most famous household names of prehistoric animals ever. It's probably one of the first creatures you think of when I say dinosaur, or you hear flying dinosaur. Pterodactyl is pretty much the one. It's a reptile, not a dinosaur, as we mentioned before. 
You know already, yada, yada, yada. It was featured in games like Jurassic Park 3 Danger Zone, misidentified as a baby Pteranodon, Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder, and Jurassic World The Game, although it looks like a female Pteranodon with a curved beak in that game. You'd see it in shows like Dino Dan and the Jurassic Park animated series. It also made appearances in The Land Before Time. And there's even a New York Times bestseller book entitled P is for Pterodactyl, the worst alphabet book ever. It was also the star character of the 2005 horror film Pterodactyl. And yet, in that film, the creature resembled a Pteranodon more than Pterodactylus. That's kind of sad. And of course, the Pterodactyl is shown in the first Jurassic Park movie. A Pterodactylus skeleton can be seen in the front entrance of the visitor's center. Now, there seems to be some sort of fallout in the popularity of this creature happening these past few years, but why, you may ask? I was also asking the same question. Well, it is possible that the adaptation of the Pteranodon into the 2001 Jurassic Park 3 movie and the 2015 Jurassic World movie has given a rise to popularity to Pteranodon over the Pterodactyl. These films portrayed this ancient flying reptile as a gigantic, gruesome killing machine, giving the Pterodactyl a run for its money. Anyways, it's been snubbed by the Pteranodon, but let's move on to the diet and behavior of this very confusing flying reptile. So the pterodactyl was most likely a piscivore, or a fish eater. During the Jurassic period, the region that is now Bavaria in Germany used to be a swampy wetland at the edge of an ancient sea. This was where most pterodactylus fossils were found. This led paleontologists to believe that pterodactyl fed mostly on fish and small animals. It is often portrayed flying low near the shoreline and picking small fish out of the water like a modern seagull. It may have been diurnal, meaning that pterodactyl was most likely hunting during the day and active during the day. And this was based on studies on its scleral rings that are found around the eyes. And that's the pterodactyl, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it wasn't too confusing, but I hope it gave you guys some insight on this crazy but confusing creature. If you love this channel and you love everything that we've been doing, make sure that you leave us a dinosaur-sized thumbs up, because we are covering all the different species of animals in the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World franchise. Also subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss a single dino or prehistoric animal quick dive on this channel. And hey, comment a dinosaur or prehistoric creature that you would like to see next. If you like this channel and you do want to support us, make sure you leave us a donation or PayPal link in the description. Your next animal will be the Therizinosaurus, and we'll see you then. Goodbye!